Hi, and uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For many years now, um, I've um, been a, a sometimes follower of um, the art of photography by Ted Forbes on YouTube, where he uh, reminds us of the art involved in photography, and he reviews and shows us lots of good photography books at times too, and he has a collection of those. I sort of collect them over here too, and I... I don't see too many Australians' books in his collection. Maybe I've missed some of those episodes, though. But um, I've got a couple here. I'm going to review one today, and then I'm going to just tell you about briefly about the next one I'm going to share in the next video. But I've uh, done a few of these photography, Australian photography book reviews over the years and talked about some of the Australian photographers. This little book here is a fair, fairly innocuous-looking book, the original cover is disappearing. It's sort of like a cloth cover. It's called Australian Photography, a Portfolio. And um, I, I looked up on the internet to see if I could find any copies of it to see how much they're selling for, because I thought I might sell it. But uh, when I looked at the prices that some people were asking, there was one uh, one area there, a second-hand bookseller, was selling this book for $175 American dollars. I thought, wow, <laughs> you know, it's just a, a little book. And uh, you wonder why it's so valuable. Well, possibly because um, there's uh, some famous Australian photographers <coughs> have actually written some articles about um, photography in the back of the book and in the introduction. And uh, I've just come across here. One of them is um, Harold Cagno, who I've mentioned before and reviewed. In fact, I mentioned him in the last video, I think, the one in the Flinders Ranges about the Cagno tree up in... Uh, the Flinders Rangers, and uh, he wrote quite a lengthy uh, article in there about the amateur and the professional, and then there's another um, essay here, The Emotional Factor in Photography, and that's by Max Dupain, who's also a famous um, Australian photographer, and then there's The Salon, International Photographic Art by L.A. Lyons, I'm not sure if I haven't come across him before, the Advance of Colour Photography by Jay Mitchell. This came out in about 1949, I think, this book. And uh, who else was there here? Yeah. I think, did I mention Lawrence Le Guay? He's here somewhere anyway. Anyway, I'm going to just, I'll flick through some of the pages. Uh, maybe if I can just find some of them here. There's a couple. All black and white photography in this book. The one on the right there T, uh, is called Schnigvoit. He's a conductor by the looks of things. That's by Max de Payne. The other one is by Neil Town, The Young Chickens. And uh, these are a couple of photographers I don't know because they're amateurs and professionals, but I wouldn't know who some of these were anyway. But um, this is uh, number nine. The picture above is called Problem Child by John Olnut, and the other guy is called Young Australian by Paul Moline. And um, what else have we got here? That one on the right there, or uh, well, this one here, is called Children of the Waterfront. That's by Harold Casno. And the other one is called After Church by R.H. McKinney. Some interesting old old Australia rabbit trappers and the camp cook. That little place there where they're sitting in there, I remember sitting in a little um, smoko hut like that out on a sheep station on the Darling River years ago, exactly the same as that. And uh, these guys are out, and people still um, trap rabbits or shoot rabbits and kangaroos mainly. These days in Outback Australia, so they are by David Camp Cook, is by David Potts, and the rabbit trappers are by David Potts. Here's a, um, a shot of old Sydney, and that's by Harold Casno. What else have we got? And Frank Hurley is in this book, of course. He's the famous um, uh, Antarctic photographer, or uh, was it Antar in, the, in the ice anyway? Um, I've, I've spoken about him before and reviewed his book, his autobiography, or biography anyway, before about Frank Hurley. But that's... Um, in the deep south, that that ship, the Endeavour, got stuck in the ice, and it was an amazing 
tale of survival and Frank Hurley was there taking the photographs. I've got a few of his books here and um, here's some more landscape work. Tree Freeze by Kenneth Hastings and Landscape. The one with the, this one here by Scott Polkinghorne. I'll just read a little bit. Oh, there's some nice portraits here. Look at that. Beautiful lighting and black and white contrast and whatever in these shots. Uh, the one, the girl with the long hair is Bambi Tuckwell. I think she's an Australian actress. And um, the other one is just called Fashion. So the Bambi Tuckwell one was done by Noel Ruby. And uh, the Fashion one was by Rob Hillier. So there you go. They're nice photos. So it's sprinkled with different types of shots. There's a little bit more fashion shots there. And um, it's it's uh, got about 60 odd photos, I think. There's one here. Which I saw somewhere. This guy there, I don't know whether he's Winston Churchill, but he certainly looks like him. <laughs> and the guy uh, over this side. And then the other guy smoking his pipe is by G. Grant Thompson, probably a relation. And uh, the one of the, the Churchill person is by the late Dr. Julian Smith. The other one's called Old Timer. So that's just a little bit of introduction to some of the photographs that are in here. Um, a wet street. I've got lots of books uh, here of old photographs of old Australia. In fact, there's some on special at the moment um, over in the shopping centre I go to, which I wouldn't mind getting hold of. Um, beautiful big hardcover books of of old Sydney and old Brisbane and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'll read a little bit from the introduction of um, Harold Casno here. Uh, the Photographer Over the Years, Part 1, The Professional. As I have been associated with professional photography over a long period, it seems reasonable that I should be able to write something about its progress here in Australia. Previous to my birth in New Zealand in 1878, my parents had been engaged in professional work at the famous studio of Freeman Brothers, Sydney, where my father had started his photographic life by sweeping out the gallery and running errands. That was about 1865. The studio was noted for high-class portraiture, so he received a good training and in due course rose to the status of operator. It's amazing, isn't it, to think that these guys were doing all this way back then. Photography in those days had passed from the daguerreotype to the wet collodial plate and the silver abdomen print. The gallery carried all the elaborate faked stone terraces and painted backgrounds of the day, and the slanted roof, fitted with glass, let in the daylight, controlled by a series of light and dark curtains fitted with wires and pulleys. There you go, that's how it used to be done. Uh, my parents in due course set off for Wellington, where they eventually opened their own studio, fitted out in the traditional style of the period. After my arrival, I became a babysitter for many early portraits, and my first remembered impression is the whiff of ether used in the wet collodial plate progress. He's talking about uh, this large camera uh, that was there. He said the big camera was... I won't go into all the details of what it was called. I'm trying to do a... Um, record a PDF of this book actually so I can come back and refer to this later on even if I do sell the book. The big camera he says was rather fearsome and the pedestals, heavy plush chairs and curtains, a boat, a part of a ship's mast, a clam shell for the naked baby picture, <laughs> stuffed birds and animals etc used as backgrounds added to the total effect. The sitter had a wide choice of landscapes, seascapes, mansions and cathedral interiors or to add to the social, to add to the social importance of the finished portrait. I remember the awesome iron headrest that was pushed up behind the sitter and the clamps that fitted his head and back to keep him frozen for the shutter exposure of many sec and the, the clamps that fitted his head and back to keep him frozen for the shutter exposure of many seconds. The exposures depended on the weather, bright or dull, because remember there's light coming through the ceiling or wherever. Uh, when children arrived to be taken, Screens and blinds were drawn to enable the velvet-jacketed operator to t make a snap shutter exposure by squeezing the bulb quickly in his hand. 
I still retain a few portraits of myself as a child and my mother, brothers and sisters, all taken in the Wellington studio. As the years passed, great changes took place in studio techniques. A Paris photographer, Eugène Disteri, introduced the small portrait, the small portrait card known as the carte de visite vite, visite. That's C-A-R-T-E-D-E-V-I-S-I-T-E. -E -E. And his idea made him a fortune. Many of these cards, well known in Australia, will be found in the ornate old family album. I've got a collection of some of those. Disteri professed that there was art in photography, but he was first and foremost a shrewd businessman. In his Paris studio, the carte de visite, visit became a rage, and he is reputed to have taken up to 200 sitters on some days, although he died penniless in 1890. So, some wonderful um, stuff, um, uh, remembrances by Harold Casno in that, and... Um, Max Dupain, of course, was a legend. I'll just quote a couple of sentences from his article. It's a very lengthy article. Um, Photography is a new means of expression in society. In a hundred years, as it has evolved to a state of being a primary visual force in our lives. The present standard of visual expression in any field, painting, sculpture, architecture, and especially the advertising arts, is nourished by the visual food which the new photography provides. In the past, it was the painter who brought the behaviour and expressions of peoples to the surfaces of consciousness. consciousness. Today, it is the photographer. The varieties of photographic experiences are very extensive. Up to the present, we have discussed some of the emotional workings of the aesthetic or semi-aesthetic expressions of art in our lives. These have been achieved by old mediums, the folk song, the written word and the plastic arts. The problem is now to point out the workings of similar factors in the new medium of photography. And uh, there's a wealth of interesting articles in here, or, or thoughts in here by some of these photographers. And at the back of the, the book, of course, you've got some advertisements of the day. Um, a D-Hell camera. I don't know what that is. Gives you correct exposure. With auto cowl, gives you correct exposure in three seconds. Model 16 slash 35 for 15 pounds 9 and 3. Just set the shutter speed, read number shown opposite, bright, dull, etc. 3. Set the diaphragm. So there you go. That was a D hell camera. It says um, F3.5 anastigmat lens, optical eye level finder, smooth body release, self erecting front, shutter 1 second to 1 250th of a second. Delayed action, inbuilt flash synchronizer, 16 pictures on 120 film. There you go. That's what that camera's all about. I wonder if you can still get one of those. And then there's all the developer over there. And here's a Voigtlander, 35mm Vito being advertised there as well. And uh, for fine photography, Jufa color, Jufa color. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, that type of. Um, uh, what do they call it? Film, of course, <laughs> before. Anyway, I'll, I'll close that there, that little review, and uh, just point you to the next one that I'm going to be talking about on the next video when I get around to doing that. This is a beautiful volume here. This is A Century in Focus, South Australian Photography, which is where I live, uh, from the 1840s to the 1940s. And... Uh, this has got all sorts of, these are the cart, there's some art, examples of the cart de viste type photography that we were just talking about there. And uh, anyway, I'll review all this uh, later on, uh, all the different uh, camera operators and studios that were operating and the different people that were professional photographers doing the different sort of work that they were doing. And then the, the artist artistic type photography that came in. Look at that shot, that's a, a nice shot, isn't it? That one there. Anyway, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you wish. Make some comments if you like. If you've seen this book before, uh, let me know. Um, tell me what your favourite old-time photography books are. So we'll see you next time. See you later.